Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. Are you looking to plan and book an upcoming Disney vacation? Contact the Tierra Talk Show's official travel agent, James from Destinations in Florida, by visiting destinationsinflorida.com backslash tiara for a free quote. The link is also included in the show notes on our website. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, musical composer George Wilkins, to the show. Welcome, George. Thank you for having me. I, I really wanted to begin our, our interview by talking about your beginnings with musical composition. When did you kind of figure, ooh, I really like music, and I think maybe I could do something with music for a job? Well, I, I was a singer as a young kid. I, I started off uh, as a voice soloist with the St. Paul's Cathedral Choir in Detroit, Michigan, and kind of uh, that took me into my early teens, and I got into a vocal group, uh, two girls and three guys, and we ended up being the vocal group with Patty Page back in the 50s, and I started writing vocal arrangements for that group at that time, and that's probably when I first kind of got into thinking uh, arranging and composition. From there, I went into the Army Band in Washington, D.C. as an arranger, and that's when I started composing uh, for the band and the chorus. And I came back to New York in the early 60s and wrote jingles for a long time and came out to California and continued on. I did the Como show when I, at NBC when it first went to color, and that had to be... 1957, maybe. All the Patty Page shows we did, we filmed, actually. So that was a film show that was on ABC, and I don't know if they were in color then or not. I joined Disney in 1979. When I joined, all the, all the guys that were running the company then were all, you know, were all friends of Walt. Uh, in fact, Bill Miller was the president of the company, and that was Walt's son-in-law. You came to work for the Disney Company around 79. What was yeah, that first project I, I that came, you worked on? I came in as Buddy Baker's, uh, kind of his protege. Buddy had gotten into an accident and uh, a pretty close call on the freeway and uh, was in the hospital laying there. And Bill Miller came over and said, Buddy, uh, does anybody know what you know? Bill Miller was real concerned that somebody else knew what Buddy knew. And so that's when I was hired. And uh, I had done some work for Buddy, you know, some arranging. And uh, so the first thing I ended up doing was um, a big project on the land pavilion for Epcot. Yeah, I did a lot of arranging, and then I ended up writing some of the material. But uh, in most cases, in that in that instance, I was an orchestrator arranger. I just loved it. I have to mention uh, really quickly, uh, you got to work on uh, an Epcot attraction called Food Rocks, and that was so much fun because that was kind of impersonating celebrities as fruits. Yeah, it food. wasn't just impersonating. They actually came and did it. I know. Well, yeah, that, that was amazing. I think it was the point, Pointer Sisters. Uh, I don't know if it was Cher who did come, come in. Little Little Richard came Little in. Little Richard came in. Chubby and, Checker. Uh, Pointer Sisters and... And uh, Neil Sedaka Neil came, Sedaka. Neil Sedaka Sedaka came yeah. in, yeah. Uh, and then somebody else, I can't remember his name, but yeah, I, I know Dave. Uh, no, uh, uh, Tom Lock, <laughs> but he played the rapper. Yes, that's right. What was? It? Were you there for the recording sessions with these people? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, no, I produced all of that. I'm an old guy. <laughs> I can't remember names, but the two guys that produced that for for that that wrote and designed that show, um, came up with a you know, all the ideas for it. Uh, I just arranged it. The thing was, uh, one of the interesting little sidelights on that was that um, 
on the Pointer Sisters number, which I think was, uh, I had hired uh, four girls, four of the great, you know, background singers in L.A., and they came and did the Pointer Sisters demo that I did and got played for Eisner. I mean, man, we all thought it was just fantastic. We said, you know, how are we going to top this? I mean, even the Pointer Sisters are going to be as good as, well, the Pointer Sisters came in and <laughs> just tore it up, man. They, You know, they were just fabulous, so... That's where you find the difference between uh, sound alikes and the the true artist. You know, the true artists have something. I was so glad to hear that they would come in and impersonate themselves and talk about nutrition. I thought that was so that was so sweet of them to do that. You know, that's a, like well, what, what an opportunity uh, too. Little, little Richard came in and he couldn't. We had put the uh, original the track that he did, which was Tutti Fruity, and we put it in the original key that the record was in. And he couldn't sit in that key. So, oh, man, that's way too high. I said, you know, I've got to lower that. So we went in, I, I played a, 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 you know, I went in and transposed the track and did a, a real quick demo and a quick track on the piano. I love that show, and I, I do miss it, and I always thought that was fun. Something that's still at the Disney theme parks is the Kilimanjaro Safari, and you get you get this African sense of feel to it, and there's a track in the middle of it. I can't remember what it's called, but you have this wonderful African choir singing this really nice, low-key uh, ballad while we're looking at flamingos at the Kilimanjaro Safari when you're on the ride. Where were you finding Finding these specific tracks, you know, were you composing some of the music uh, and then finding those it? Are, those are all samples. I used a, a London choir track for the for the big chorus, and all the African stuff is off of a uh, a sample album that I, you know, sample album that I have. They sound uh, amazing, and they're still being used in the parks, and it, it just I really mean, puts you in that feel uh, of, of being in Africa, and I love that. I think that it yeah. really suits it, and you did a wonderful job, and then another attraction in Animal Kingdom, still there, is It's Tough to Be a Bug, which you had to compose another uh, original theme song for that attraction, right. too. Well, yeah, I do. I, uh, Kevin Rafferty and I wrote the uh, the main theme, the, the song. Bruce Belton did that ride, did a wonderful. Yeah, and those were all samples that I put onto his tracks. Wow. And how did you get the bug sounds? How was that working? Well, I, we, we collected them. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> there's, there's a library of bug sounds. That, and then all the bee stuff, uh, all the... Am I, I might be mixing up a, I did this... I used bees for... Um, oh, no, no, you used bees for this one because it's Beauty and the Bees. So Beauty and the yeah, Bees song, yeah, right, that was great. Yeah, because I remember, <laughs> you know, one of those things. And Can I tell you a story? Absolutely, go ahead. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me preface this all by saying that I did a lot of work with the, the Sherman Brothers. They're dear friends of mine. You know, I know uh, Bob's gone, but, but they were dear friends of mine, and I did a lot of... A lot of stuff of theirs, um, and they had done a theme for the Horizons Pavilion. I think it was like "Look Out the Window" or one of those "Window of Tomorrow." And I, they, I got the job of doing a big orchestration on that, and I brought in Nick Bell, uh, one of the singers that had, he's famous for doing Old Man River on Broadway. And I brought him in to do it, and we did this thing, and we brought it into this big meeting with General Electric, and Randy Bright, who was then head of uh, Epcot, we all listened to it, and I don't know, there had to be 20 people in the room, and Randy Bright said, you know, I just don't like that song. And everybody went, what? You know, holy, you know, we spent all this money. And, you know, and Randy says, it's just too much, you know, it sounds like Disneyland. It doesn't sound like Epcot in the future of the tomorrow, you know. He says, George could, George should write something. So I went home that weekend and wrote the Horizon Pavilion <laughs> theme, and, wow. which I'm very proud of because I wrote lyrics and uh, I, lo- I wrote the lyrics along with some help from uh, Tom Fitzgerald. And uh, but I walked in Monday and had to present this thing to all these people. I, needless to say, I was very nervous. And but that's what we ended up. And so everything in that ride is kind of based off that theme. What always knocked me up on that ride was when you're approaching uh, that spaceship in outer space, and you, and you you see it off in the distance, and then you come into it, and the music, and that, that whole thing, just, 
my hair would stand on end every time. And I took that ride, you know, like needless to say, like about 30 times um, when we were installing it and everything. And that always just, just was so amazing when we'd pull into that. One of the more amazing things that's ever happened to me uh, was I had lunch with a guy over at Universal who had done... They, he had done the laser show, which is over the lake at uh, Epcot, which I never saw, by the way. But he and he was telling me that he would go over to this pavilion and, and stare at this mural and listen to this music. Right? And it turns out he was in the Horizons Pavilion, and he had—I don't think he had any idea I did that, had done that. But he sat there and sang me the song. <laughs> And then you got to work with uh, Paul Osterhout, the director of Carousel Progress, on the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management, which which was kind of like an update, adding Zazu from Lion King and Gilbert Godfrey uh, as Iago from Aladdin. Right, um, right. Gilbert gets to sing, and I had no idea he could sing. I remember Godfrey. Yeah, he was funny, man. He, I, yeah, sing and I, you know, I'm amazed because his act, he, you know, he kind of shouts and. Um, uh, it was surprising how good and professional he was. You know, very good talent. <laughs> and you, and then Armelia McQueen comes in, and she is the tiki goddess of disaster. Oh, that's, that's the song I wrote. Yeah, that was genius. I love. I, I miss her. They they kind of they up they put the attraction back to the original attraction that Walt yeah. Disney opened, which is I enjoy that too. But I uh, miss Oa so much because I loved her sassiness, and that musical track was great. I just wish it was long. Longer. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. She was great. She was so, great. She came right in from off the Broadway singer. stage, didn't she? I mean, yeah. wasn't well, she, she a big she, Broadway actor? She was working in Walt Disney World, too, on a TV show called Adventures in Wonderland as the Red Queen, and she'd have to sing a song every week for that, too. She, is yeah. just, she just blows me away with her singing voice. She's so talented. I got to speak with her once. She's yeah. so sweet. And the good thing, I, I think you'll be really happy to hear this, is they opened up a new a restaurant and Polynesian Resort in Disney World. But Aoa, the actual original auto animatronic, is in the restaurant. And when you order an Aoa drink, they all the lights go out and you hear Aoa, 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 Aoa. <laughs> and then you hear her laugh and laugh. And it's just great. It's like, yay, she's back, you know, so it's fantastic. So let's let's talk about what you're working on now. What are the new projects you're working on? Because I just love everything you do. Uh, you, what everything you touch is gold. So tell us about what's the up. <laughs> Coming projects. I'm so excited well, to hear this. Many many years ago, even before I joined Disney, I, Bernie Bernstein was my manager and partner. I used to have a vocal group called the Doodle Town Pipers, and I wrote a show uh, along with another guy for Jimmy Henson and the Muppets. And uh, right at that point, when we kind of finished the demo and everything, and I was handing it to Jimmy because I, I did a lot of work with Jimmy uh, on. A, on a show called Our Place in New York many years ago. Point being is that uh, he didn't, he never did it. And so we, uh, we kind of put it in the drawer and that was the end of it until uh, last, two years ago, um, a friend of mine, my partner on the project, actually showed it to a couple of uh, puppeteers out of New York, John Tartaglia and his partner. And so it's now going to become a puppet show uh, that's going to be playing in New York off Broadway, and it's opening wow. in uh, in Tampa, Florida, on the sixth of January. And other than the, we I've rewritten the whole score, and uh, we're just getting around to uh, the, you know the final stages of script, and we're just getting ready to really get into it here so it's all got to we go into rehearsal on december 22nd in florida and so it, does it have a, a, a different title change now or is it still the same well program? it's going to be it's called little minutes in timeland is the working title at this point it used to be called little minutes christmas but because it's a it's going to be a theater piece and has to run all year long we've taken it's no longer about christmas <laughs> it's now about it's about wasted time, and uh, that all the wasted time goes to this place called Wasteland, and all the clocks in Timeland go and collect all this wasted time so there's enough time for next year. And we're real excited about uh, the the guys that are going to be producing this because they're just wonderful. And uh, so it's going to be a very creative uh, effort, and it's my first puppet show uh, 
I mean, I've worked with the, the Muppets a lot, but the, this is my for all the technology, theater, you know, theater technology that's going to go into this is pretty amazing. So I'm kind of knocked out. At 81 years old, I'm going to make Broadway finally. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know what? Before you leave, I have to ask three Disney questions. I always ask my guests. I call them the Fab okay. Three questions. So we'll start with the Donald one. The Donald one is, what is one of your favorite Disney movies? Ah, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And our second question is the goofy question. What Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Ah, interesting. Goofy. (laughs) Our Mickey question, our last one. If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Oh, my God. I hate to say it, but small world. (laughs) Well, thank you again for coming on the show, George. I can't wait to hear more about your Broadway musical. It's going to be fantastic. I know it. Well, it was fun for me, too, so... Oh, <laughs>